Hello, friends. Today, we are going to be discussing client retention and what to do with clients or customers once they are already in the door. Balancing building a successful business and being a superstar mom is hard. And yet, in today's digital world, it's more common than ever. The question becomes, how do we successfully grow a business and children at the same time? Join us for a candid conversation as we share our insights into marketing and motherhood. I'm Angela Reeder. And I'm Jessie Valle. Welcome to the Marketing Moms Podcast. All right. So the saying goes, or I don't know if it's a saying or just a business truth, that it's actually cheaper to maintain and retain a customer than constantly bringing in new ones. So it's very important to keep clients and customers happy so that they will continue to buy from you versus you always having to go out and seek new customers. Yes. And especially if you are a service business, part of your business is very likely going to rely on referrals and keeping clients happy and excited to be working with you is one of the best and easiest and cheapest ways to Mm -hmm. make that happen. Yeah. It doesn't take any more energy to (laughs) say something nicely (laughs) than it does to say it negatively. I mean, maybe a little bit of pause before you just speak your mind, but for the most part, yeah, it's a lot easier to keep your current customers happy than to continually go out and find new ones, for sure. So what are some ways we do that? Yeah, we actually have a little (laughs) list here. (laughs) You know, Angela, can I just say a side note? We've been really good at having little lists of what we're going to talk about. This is pretty good for us. I mean, not that I don't love our let's just start, hit record and riff episodes. Start talking. (laughs) Those are fun too. But having an actual list has been very nice as well. (laughs) Yes. One of these days we might actually plan our topics in advance instead of, you know, five minutes before we hit record. (laughs) I think we're doing fine. (laughs) This is real life. (laughs) Yes. All right. So the first easy way that you can retain your current customers is by providing excellent customer service and support. Like it's simple when, I mean, nothing flies through the internet faster than a business with terrible customer support. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and not just that. Fast. Yeah, and not just that. It's really hard to dig yourself out of once it's established. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I think I, if you were to ask any marketers what company they work with that has the worst customer service, first of all, I'm pretty sure all of them would say the same company. But I'm also sure it would take less than three seconds for them to name it. Mm-hmm. The other thing is a lot of people like they like to talk about their bad experiences online versus the good ones. People like to jump on social media to complain. So let's say that someone is considering becoming your client or customer. They hop online, do a quick search of your name on social media and all these negative reviews pop up. Yeah. That's not going to go well. No. (laughs) No. No, that does not work well on top of, you know, not not being a great experience for your clients, making it difficult to re- retain clients and customers. It is definitely going to influence potential new clients and customers. Yeah. And I know we're at this point in our business where we should have already established good customer service habits. But now it's even more important than ever because if you really want to step back then you need to have these procedures in place so anyone can hop in and give the same quality of customer service to your customers, whether Mm -hmm. it's you or someone else. Right. Yep, absolutely. So the second thing is... You could potentially like offer some sort of loyalty program or discount or something to your longstanding customers. 
I know in the past, Angela, you've, I believe, when you raise your prices, you don't always raise it for the people who have been with you for a while. Correct. Or if you raise it, you don't raise it as much. Yeah, absolutely. I don't raise it as much. Um, I've also offered discounts if people are purchasing like a bulk package of something or Mm -hmm. retainers are occasionally cheaper than, you know, one-off projects. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice to have that recurring income. Yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty easy right there. Like if I know that you're going to pay me for the next six months, I will happily give you a discount for those Mm -hmm. six months in order to make sure you stay with me for six months. And I can rely on that income to come in, which, again, at this point in our business is very helpful and important to be able to have that more steady stream of income and and it's more reliable. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Another thing you can do, especially if you are uh, service-based, is to offer referral uh, payments, like Mm -hmm. offer a a portion or a specific set amount for referrals if that referral becomes a client. Yeah. Yeah. And or whether it's a referral fee or a, hey, you get some sort of discount when you refer someone. I know that other companies do that. I would say that that's definitely a bigger discussion. And I believe we're going to be talking about it in its own specific chapter. Here (laughs) Here in a couple chapters, we will dive deeper into referral fees and how you might structure them. But regardless, it's definitely a way to retain current clients. Because Mm -hmm. if I can refer someone and then you're going to give me something in return. Yeah. Well, that sounds pretty cool versus me switching to somebody else. Yeah. So it kind of creates that loyalty and, and retainment. And helps with the the word of mouth and, and things like that. Cause you're going to see a lot more people, you know, speaking highly of you online if they're getting a if they're getting fee a kickback <laughs> or a kickback than you are if if you're just providing terrible customer service. <laughs> Too true. Too true. (laughs) All right. Another, I think, fairly easy thing you could do, especially as a service provider, is to personalize your interactions and remember client preferences. If you are using any sort of customer, what am I trying to say? Like a system to manage clients and customers. Yes. Thank you. CRM, Customer Relationship Manager. Yeah. Thank you. Um, (laughs) You should be able to put little notes in there about them. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I have a client whose brother-in-law recently had a surgery. Next time I talk to them, I can check in. Hey, by the way, how's your brother-in-law? Or someone who has a kid and you can either write the kid's name or something they're doing and, hey, how's Johnny's softball, you know, or how's how's Johnny's baseball going? You know, you can you can ask about that kind of thing. And it doesn't take yeah. much effort. And I mean, if somebody was like, oh, hey, how's your new puppy doing? I'd be like, oh, my God, you remembered. Oh, my gosh, you remembered my puppy. I know. I That reminds me of I used to, to go get my hair cut pretty regularly. And the girl was really great about how are the kids? How are the, does the drama? Like she was very, very good about that. And I asked her one time, I was like, how do you even remember all of this stuff? Like, I know I'm not in here enough Mm -hmm. to like warrant, I'm not cool enough to warrant you just remembering. And she was like, oh no, I absolutely just write all this stuff down. Like (laughs) after my clients leave. (laughs) But you should also maybe not do it in the creepiest way because- my dentist will do that. And it's like, okay, dude, I come in twice a year. Yeah. There's no way you remember I work from home. So don't right. ask me yeah. about it. Absolutely. <laughs> it was don't weird. be creepy about it. Just, you know, a little hey, bit of remembering. So you're still working from home? Well, you clearly have a note in your system. So yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am still working. In a- yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there are definitely things that you can, I mean, it is nice. But it helps when you have more frequent interaction with someone when you bring those things up. Well, and it can be even something as simple as remembering which way your client prefers to be communicated with. Like if you have a client that really prefers 
say text message over email just remembering that and remembering to like consciously try to communicate in that way if that's one of your you know forms of communication with your clients uh, can make a big difference like I Mm -hmm. have a couple clients that really really prefer phone calls I hate phone calls (laughs) but I will make phone calls for them Mm -hmm. um, because they're good clients and I want to keep them and I want to give them a good experience Mm -hmm. whereas you know if I didn't make a note of that. I didn't pay attention. Then, you know, I'm sending emails. They may not be happy. They may go find somebody else that's willing to do phone calls or that remembers that they have a hard time reading text messages because the text is too small. (laughs) Now we understand that I'm not asking you to bend over backwards and let people walk all over you. It needs to be within reason, but also this is, a lot easier for smaller companies, the bigger Mm -hmm. you become kind of like my dentist. I'm like, you see people all day, every day, and you only see me twice a year. There's no way that you remember this stuff. There's no way you remember this. But if it's, yeah, like is someone that cuts your hair every couple of weeks, or if it's someone in, in you are, I don't know, helping them out with their tech. Mm-hmm. You're going to be talking to them more often. So it's really nice to just make those comments. I understand sometimes you don't want to waste time and you want to be all business sure. and you want to be efficient. But building and strengthening those relationships matter, especially in retaining and keeping the customer happy so they continue to stay with you for a long time to come. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So another way that you can help with this is to ask your clients and customers, (laughs) seek feedback so that you can do better and provide better service and, and better customer service for them. And one of the things that I actually ask when I do offboarding and ask for testimonials, one of the questions is like, what do you wish I had done better or is what do you wish I knew Mm -hmm. or had paid attention to like and it's that's a hard question to ask and it's a hard question to get the answer to sometimes (laughs) but it's helped me customize packages it's helped me change the way I communicate with clients it's Mm -hmm. helped me improve relationships with clients so it's very important to get that feedback yeah and also Working with someone, let me let me come from the customer's perspective. Working mm-hmm. with someone who cares what I have to say, yeah, m- like it makes me feel good. Like, wow, Angela really cares that I yeah. prefer phone calls. Yeah, that's nice, and she's actually listening to why. Maybe I'm yeah old and. Ill, computer illiterate and computer I don't know how illiterate. to check my email but I certainly know how to, how to answer the phone thank you right. Angela <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> um, <clears throat> it, it reminds me of when I mean this isn't necessarily about feedback but my mom walked into a Sam's Club one time and the person took the time to help her get the app on her phone and show her how to scan things herself Yes. It just took a matter of a few minutes extra to take the time to go above and beyond to be like, listen, I can tell you're not really like into the phone thing, but let me show you how easy this can be and took the time to help her out. I guarantee you my mom has a very happy experience when she thinks of Sam's Club now. She doesn't have a sour taste in her mouth because they took the extra time to look at her as an individual and help her specifically with her needs. And that can be... Like it, it's more important and has a bigger impact than you might think. Yeah. And let's be honest, Sam's Club is big enough that they probably had some focus groups that told them people didn't want to mess with putting the app on their phone. So they went out of their way to make it easier. Like, Yeah. Getting that feedback can definitely help. Mm -hmm. For sure. All right. So yes, definitely seek, not just seek, not just receive the feedback, but also to seek it out can be very important to be like, hey, but what do you think? How how Mm -hmm. was that for you? What did you think of that experience? How could I do better? If you were to change something, what would it be? 
And customers really like that. They really respond to being asked something like that because it isn't something a lot of like nobody asks, hey, where did I do a bad job? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody wants to ask that. So when they do get asked, hey, where can I make improvements? What didn't work for you? Like it really does not just give you feedback, not just help you make improvements, but it also improves their experience as a customer mm -hmm. or a client. Yeah. Another thing you can do is continue to stay engaged with them through an email newsletter or social media, just something to continually allow them to see the you beyond the work. Yep. Social media is really, really good for this, especially things like Instagram and TikTok, which are kind of visual, mm -hmm. uh, but they allow you to get a lot of information out in a very short amount of time, which is important because a lot of people don't have the attention span to read mm -hmm. long Facebook posts or, you know, go through a to X, X thread, whatever <laughs> they're called now, <laughs> not the threads thread, but the one that used to be Twitter yes. <laughs> X. <laughs> X threads um, to get, you know, to get to the point or to, to keep updated. Yeah. So I see especially TikTokers do this really, really well and Instagrammers do this really, really well. Yeah. And I've even seen on Facebook just people having an updated Facebook page. When I was uh, looking for my, my puppy, I got her through a local breeder and I was able to go on, see how the puppies were doing, get updates, see what kind of new litters they have and stayed up to date with them. Another thing, my favorite taco truck. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're closed to the summer and I am devastated. However, I know this. And so every time I drive by, I don't have to be upset. They're closed again? No, it's no, because they were open and communicated with us, their loyal customers on Facebook. Yes. I could be like, I uh, summer can't come fast enough. I really, <clears throat> really want my burrito. <laughs> yes. And that, that also goes to like engaging that like to actually be engaging. There's a couple of brands uh, that do this really well. Uh, Wendy's does the engagement really, really well, like big brands. Wendy's does mm -hmm. it really well. One of the department, I think it's Oklahoma or Nebraska, one of them, Department of Wildlife does this really well. They not only post on their own thing, but they engage on even things that don't really seem like would be in their niche. They engage on those and it kind of helps with the brand awareness and Mm. things like that. So that can be really helpful as well, just <clears throat> being engaging. Yeah. And that's another thing that can circle back to personal, you know, personalizing interactions yeah. and remembering client preferences. If I go to a client's personal social media account and mm -hmm. see something that's going on, encourage them. Hey, that, that yeah. looks really hey, cool. Or wow, that's amazing. Just for them to see your name, you're like, oh, she's paying attention to me. She cares. I'm going to buy from her again. Yes. I actually have the reverse of this happen this week. I, Jesse knows I've been on the hunt for a specific notebook that mm -hmm. I someone got me as a gift and it's amazing and now I can't find it anymore. So I posted a picture of it on Instagram. I was like, I need people to help me figure out what notebook this is. <laughs> and several people posted and said it was from a specific store in Canada. And I actually had a customer that I have not, like, I haven't helped her with stuff in a couple of years even, got online and was like, if, you know, if they have that at my local store, I would be happy to ship it to you. Like... Wow. Right? Love <laughs> so you. First, that made me feel really good because I was like, oh, I must have really made a good impression on that client. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's kind of the reverse of what we're talking about. If that had been a company that I worked with or a contractor that I worked with, like that would have been really, really good engagement and really cool to to have that sort of thing and be like, oh, they're paying attention to what's going on with me. Yeah. It also... And I'm not quite sure which one of these items this would fall into. Maybe it's its own standalone, but taking time to go above and beyond to maybe send something to your clients and customers. Mm -hmm. Like there were some uh, long standing clients that sometimes I would send them like a $15 
Starbucks gift card or something like that at Christmas time or their birthday. Or maybe if someone's having a baby, you send them a branded onesie. Just something little to say, hey, I see you. This is what's going on in your life. This is just for you. Another thing is when, say, you're a course creator, sending them a thank you or a welcome card handwritten. Yes. I've gotten a couple of those from course creators. I love it. Yeah, it's and so cool to get that's that. It's not necessarily like super personalized. It's still personalized mm-hmm. in that it's, hey, Angela, thank you so much for joining. Yeah. And maybe there's some stickers in there or something. Like enjoy yeah. these stickers because now you're a Swifty. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Just having those or, you know, a, you know, send them a notebook. Here's a notebook. Take notes mm-hmm. while you're going through the course. It's that that's probably how I got that notebook actually yeah (laughs) the one that I can't figure out where I got Um, but yeah it's it really can make difference I think that's kind of its whole own thing the sending gifts or trinkets or cards Mm -hmm. Um, I had a a course creator that I took courses from for a while that sent like anniversary cards they would that was Mm -hmm. one of their on their intake it would ask like birthdays anniversary and then they would send like a happy anniversary card which was really really cool yeah and I know that you've expressed your love for Chewy (gasps) love Chewy I love Chewy (laughs) I can't believe I didn't say something about them before now yes Chewy sends giving you the opportunity birthday cards they sent birthday cards and Christmas cards and adoption day cards if you adopt a pet for your pets I have (laughs) five pets so I get cards all the time (laughs) from Chewy and it's they are you know hand signed you know Mm -hmm. from the team at Chewy or whatever and it's obviously like just picturing somebody sitting at their kitchen table with just stacks and stacks <laughs> of cards <laughs> from the team at Chewy. But the, still the thought of let's yeah. go out of our way to make sure that people feel, you know, welcome and that because people love their pets. Like, mm-hmm. I was so excited the first time we got one of those. I couldn't believe it. Um, we had one of our, our pets passed away a couple of years ago and I c- got online, like took her off of our list and whatever. And we got like a car, a sorry for your loss card f- mm-hmm. over her. And so that was really, really thoughtful. And uh, yeah, Jesse is right. I can't say enough good things about Chewy. <laughs> yeah. And I know that my, um, my realtor who I haven't bought a house in Mm. almost five years now, but I still continually get birthday cards and Christmas Mm -hmm. cards from my realtor. I also get those types of cards from my financial advisor. So just things like that. People will take the time to send something. Now, I can also say from those experiences, just having a card and then it's signed by them doesn't mean as much as... Like a note. Yeah, like a note. Even if it's as simple as, hey, hope the kids are doing well. Wow, they remembered I have kids. The end. Right. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be extreme. You don't have to write a three-page long love letter. It's <laughs> just. <laughs> yes. Even if it's for Angela, I might say something like, hey, hope the chickens don't keep you up at night. Yeah. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> like, this is something little that you can remember about them that you can slip in there and yeah even if my dentist was just like instead of saying hey you still doing the online business thing instead they'd be like hey how's the online business going yeah I think that would have come across better maybe a little better (laughs) yeah or even how how are your kids doing like I'll take a how are your kids doing (laughs) twice a year (laughs) like yeah for sure I don't know why that one sticks in my mind. It was just very awkward the way they they brought it up. Yeah. Like it was well, clearly it, re- read from notes. <laughs> yes. Well, and that kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning with like providing really good customer service. You remember mm-hmm. it because it was awkward. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not exactly the best, you know. Well, I mean, it doesn't didn't scare me away like I still go to no, the same dentist I'm just it's saying, no big like, deal like you were saying people they tend tried. to like post about <laughs> negative experiences online like that was you remember it because it was awkward yes I do 
do, for sure. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so at the end of the day, retaining your current clients and customers is ridiculously important, especially yes. at this stage in your business where you're hoping to maintain what you've built, have a reliable income, and maybe a little bit of slow growth. But part of the way that you can lean on what you've built is by having built that strong foundation and continuing mm -hmm. to make your current clients happy so that you don't have to continually go out and find new ones like a big like a, an initial startup. Your past right, that. exactly. So let's lean on and appreciate what we've built. If there are any things that you do that you would like to add to this list, please let us know. We are happy to to add that. And I just realized we're recording a <laughs> we're recording a podcast episode, and yet yes. earlier I said, "Hey, we'll talk about referral fees more in another chapter." Like, you Angela did. and I, I are was just going to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I did that. <laughs> Angela and I are taking these podcast episodes and using them as the chapters in our new book. Yes. So when I say that we're going to talk about it more in another chapter, I also mean there will be a future another podcast episode, episode about it. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. I think Having I the episodes <laughs> for for a foundation for chapters for the new book has been really, really helpful, but it has. Yeah. Been I was just going to let that one go. <laughs> uh, yep. Oh, well it is what it is. <laughs> if you and guys have anything you want us to add to the book, yeah. please let us know. <laughs> please send it our way. Or if there's anything you want us to chat about the experience of being at this stage in your business where you're past that initial startup stage, also let us know. We'd be happy to chat about it and make sure you get credit for it in our book. So until next week, <laughs> we'll talk to you then. Bye. Thank you for joining us today. We're so honored this is where you chose to spend your time. If this episode helped you in some way, please share it with another mom who needs to hear it. We're in this together. And if you're ready for next steps, free goodies, and more, head over to marketingmomspodcast.com. We'll see you next week.